Hey, welcome to edX world and another video in the AS A level accounting series. In this video, we're going to study what entries are to be passed when there is a par exchange of a non-current asset. Before going ahead with this video, I assume that you already know about the basics of depreciation, how to calculate depreciation, what entries to be passed. If you're not sure of the concept of depreciation or you need to revise before going to before going ahead with this video, please check the links in the description box below. There are a few videos available on depreciation on my channel. I'll give the links below. Please watch them before continuing with this video. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon so that you're notified whenever a new video is available. In this video, we will quickly have a revision of the disposal entries. The entries are to be passed when an asset is disposed of. Then we will see the journal entries that are applicable for part exchange of non-current assets. We will see the effect on the ledger accounts and finally a small salt example so that the concept is crystal clear. So let's quickly revise the entries that are to be passed at the time of disposal of an asset. The first entry to be passed is the transfer of cost of the asset from the asset account to the asset disposal account. So we debit the asset disposal account and credit the asset account with the original cost of the asset. The second entry is about the transfer of the provision or accumulated depreciation on the asset that is sold to the asset disposal account. So we need to debit our provision for depreciation account and credit the asset disposal account with the accumulated depreciation on the asset till date. Accumulated depreciation on the asset till date means total depreciation that has been provided on the asset that is disposed of till date. The next entry is about recording the sale value of the asset when an asset is disposed of or sold, either cash is received, check is received or at times it could be on credit. So the entry to be passed is cash debit, bank debit depending whether cash is received or check is received, asset disposal account credit. Here we are recording the sale value of the asset that is disposed of. And finally, the difference in the asset disposal account will help us calculate the profit or loss on disposal. Or we could also use a formula where we deduct the net book value of the asset from the sale value. If the sale value is greater than the net book value, it's a profit. If the sale value is lower than the net book value, it's a loss on disposal. Now, the same set of entries are passed for the part exchange of assets. First of all, let us understand what do you mean by part exchange of non-current assets. See, one option is to sell your old asset individually and then go and buy a new non-current asset so that you can continue your operations. Another option is to buy a new non-current asset and give away the old non-current asset in exchange for the new non-current asset and the difference might be paid in cash or check. Obviously, because the value of the new non-current asset would be higher in most cases than the value of the old non-current asset. So, all the entries that we've seen for disposal of asset would be applicable for the part exchange of non-current assets except for the third entry which will change. So, in when, when we are exchanging an old asset for a new asset, the third entry is replaced with a new entry. Unlike in a normal disposal transaction, when, when a part exchange transaction is happening, we do not receive cash or check for the old asset. So it, there, it does not make any sense to debit cash or bank account. Instead, we receive a new non-current asset in exchange for the old non-current asset. So the first step is to debit the asset account, that the new non-current asset that we are receiving, the debit that asset account with the cost of the new non-current asset. The second step is to credit the disposal account with the value of the old non-current asset. The other party, the supplier has attached certain value to the old non-current asset that will be deducted from the price of the new non-current asset that will be credited to the disposal account. Why credited to disposal account? Because that's a gain for the business, that's benefit for the business. So it will be credited to the disposal account and the difference between the cost of new asset and the value attached to the old asset will be paid either by cash or check. Hence, cash or bank account would be credited. If the asset is bought on credit, you could debit, sorry, you could credit the supplier account as well. So this is the final entry that is passed for the part exchange transaction. Apart from this, all other entries remain the same. Transfer of cost remains the same. Transfer of accumulated depreciation remains the same. And eventually transferring profit or loss on disposal remains the same. Let us have a look at the effect of these transactions on the ledger accounts. 
So in a normal disposal transaction, the entries that we usually post in the ledger accounts are these. First, we credit the asset account and debit the asset disposal account. We debit the provision account and credit the asset disposal account. Sale value is received by either cash or check. And finally, profit or loss is transferred from asset disposal account to income statement. In a part exchange transaction, the last entry that we've passed, the cash and bank entry, that it won't be applicable because we're not receiving any cash or check. Instead of that, the journal entry that we've just seen for part exchange transaction, that would be posted to the ledger accounts. The first step is to record the value of the old non-current asset which the supplier has given us. We, the supplier has deducted a certain amount from the cost of the new asset. That is the value of the old non-current asset that will be recorded, first of all, on the credit side of disposal account and also on the debit side of asset account. And the difference of the new non-current asset, which is paid by either cash or check, will be recorded on the debit side as cash or bank. So these are the changes that happen to the ledger accounts when a part exchange transaction is given in the question. Let us have a look at the example so that the transaction is very clear, so that entries are very clear. In this example, on 1st Jan, the trader's book showed a balance of $12,000 and $3,600 in the motor vehicle account and provision for depreciation account. On 1st April 21, a new motor vehicle was purchased, cost of which was $20,000. It was purchased by giving away the old motor vehicle. The old motor vehicle, for the old motor vehicle, an allowance of $3,500 was received. It means the supplier of the vehicle has attached a value of $3,500 to our old asset. Maybe if we sell it in the outside market, we could have received cash or check of 3,500 as well. But in this transaction, in this question, we are not receiving any cash or check for the old vehicle. The old vehicle was costing, originally costed 12,000. So we can see that the opening balance of the motor vehicle is 12,000. The entire motor vehicle is disposed of in exchange for a new motor vehicle. And the balance amount was to be paid by check. The balance of 20,000, the cost of new asset minus 3,500, the discount allowed for the new, for the old asset, the difference 16,500 will be paid by check. The policy of the business is to depreciate motor vehicles at 30% reducing balance method for each month of ownership. So whatever part of the year the business is holding the motor vehicle, depreciation will have to be provided for that motor vehicle. Prepare the motor vehicle account, provision for depreciation account and motor vehicle disposal account. Motor vehicle disposal account, we'll do it at the end. First, let's do the motor vehicle account and the provision account. We start by bringing down the balances on 1st Jan 2021. On 1st April 21, the old motor vehicle was given away. So there's a dis there's a power exchange transaction. So on 1st April 21, we need to credit our motor vehicle account with 12,000 to show that the old motor vehicle that was there in the opening balance as 12,000 has, has been disposed of, has been exchanged for a new motor vehicle. On 1st April 21, on the credit side, motor vehicle disposal account, 12,000. On the debit side of the motor vehicle, a new vehicle is received. Let's record that. That will be recorded in two steps. First, we have to record the allowance that was allowed for the old vehicle, which is 3,500. And the difference 16,500 that was paid by check will be recorded as a separate transaction. So on the debit side, we will record a total of 20,000 for purchase of new motor vehicle. So this way we've completed our motor vehicle account. Let us balance the motor vehicle account and go on to the provision for depreciation account. Now, before the asset was disposed of, it was utilized or it was used in the business for three months for Jan, Feb, March 2021. So we need to provide depreciation for these three months. 
before we dispose of the asset because the question clearly said that depreciation is to be provided for each month of ownership. So let us give the depreciation on 1st April 21 before we dispose of the asset. If you look at the formula, 8400, now that is the net book value, 12,000 minus 3,600 because this is a reducing balance method that we are following for the motor vehicles multiplied by 30% which is the rate of depreciation given and 3 by 12 because the asset was used only for 3 months before disposing of. What we get here is $630. Now, at the time of disposal, the entire accumulated depreciation on this asset has to be removed from this provision account and transferred to the motor vehicle disposal account, which will be done by debiting this account. So the entire accumulated depreciation of 4,230 has been transferred to motor vehicle disposal account. Then on 31st December 2021, which is the end of the year, we'll have to provide depreciation on the new motor vehicle that was purchased during this year. If you realize in the formula, I have used a nine month calculation because the asset was used for just nine months in this year from 1st April to 31st December. Let us balance our provision account, calculate our closing balance and then go ahead with our motor vehicle disposal account. So in our motor vehicle disposal account, all entries are same that, like, that we usually follow for disposal transaction except the part where we usually receive cash or check that will be replaced by a new non-current asset. So let's start preparing a motor vehicle disposal account. So if you realize instead of cash and bank, I have written motor vehicle because that's the new asset that we've received instead of physical cash or money in our bank account. All the entries in motor vehicle disposal account are done. We need to calculate a profit or loss on disposal. Clearly, the, there's a loss on disposal here. So let us take a total on the debit side and transfer the loss in this account to the income statement. So we've transferred a loss on disposal of $4,270 to the income statement. So I believe this topic is easy for you now. You can solve the difficult questions in exam also. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like the video. Please share the video with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. I'll see you very soon with a new video. Thank you.